Chapter Two of Kabumpo in Oz. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lynn Thompson. Kabumpo in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. Chapter Two Picking a Proper Princess. What shall we do first? groaned the king, holding his head with both hands. Let me think. Right, said Kabumpo. Think by all means. So the great hall was cleared, and the king, with a mysterious scroll spread out before him, thought and thought and thought. But he did not make much headway, for, as he explained over and over to Queen Posy, who with Pompadour, the elegant elephant, and the prime pumper, had remained to help him how is one to know where to find the proper princess and how is one to know the proper time for pompa to web her who was j g how did the scroll get in the cake the more the king thought about these questions the more wrinkled his forehead became why we're liable to wake up any morning and find ourselves gone he announced gloomily how does it feel to disappear i wonder i suppose it would give one rather a gone feeling but i don't believe it would hurt much volunteered kabumpo glancing uneasily over his shoulder perhaps not but it would not get us anywhere my idea is to marry the prince at once to a proper princess you're in a great hurry to marry me off aren't you said pompadour sulkily for my part i don't want to marry at all not only your poor old father choked the prime pumper rolling up his eyes how about me oh you you can disappear any time you want said the prince unfeelingly it all started with that wretched cake sighed the queen i am positive the scroll flew out of the cake of course it did cried pompous let us send for the cook and question him. So Harsham, very wet and blue from his dip, was brought before the king. A fine cook you are, roared Pompous, mixing gunpowder and scrolls in a birthday cake. But I didn't, wailed Hashem, falling on his knees. Only eggs, your highness, very best eggs, sugar, flour, spice, and bombshells cried the king angrily the cake disappeared before the party your majesty cried ijabo everyone jumped at the sudden interruption and ijabo who had crept in unnoticed stepped before the throne disappeared continued ijabo hoarsely dripping blue water all over the royal rugs one minute there it was on the pantry table next minute gone croaked ijabo flinging up his hands and shrugging his shoulders then before a fellow could turn around it was back twarn't our fault if the magic got mixed into it and here we have been dipped for nothing well why didn't you say so before asked the king in exasperation fine chance i had to say anything sniffed ijabo wringing out his lace ruffles uh, you may have the day off my good man said pompous with an apologetic cough and you also with a wave at hashem very stiffly the two walked to the door it's an off day for us all right said ijabo ungraciously and without so much as a bow the two disappeared i fear you are a bit hasty my love murmured queen posy looking after them with a troubled little frown well who wouldn't be cried pompous ruffling up his hair here we are liable to disappear any minute and all you do is to stand around and criticize me be gone he puffed angrily as a page stuck his head in the door no use shouting at people to be gone said the elegant elephant testily we'll all be gone soon enough at this queen posy began to weep into her silk handkerchief which sight so affected Prince Pompadour 
that he rushed forward and embraced her tenderly. "'I'll marry!' cried the prince impulsively. "'I'll do anything. "'The trouble is there aren't any fairy princesses around here.' "'There must be,' said the king. "'There is! "'There are!' screamed the prime pumper, bouncing up suddenly. "'Oh, yay! "'Oh, yay! "'Has your majesty forgotten Falero, royal princess?' She must be the proper one. Falero? trumpeted the elegant elephant, sitting down with a terrific thud. That awful old creature, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Silence! thundered the king. Nonsense! trumpeted Kabumpo. She's a thousand years old and as ugly as a stone lakugu. Don't you marry her, Pompa. I command him to marry her, cried the king, opening his eyes very wide and bending forward. Falero? gasped the prince, scarcely believing his ears. No wonder Pompadour was shocked. Falero, although a princess in her own right and of royal fairy descent, was so unattractive that in all her thousand years of life no one had wished to marry her. She lived in a small hut in the great forest kingdom next to pumperdink and did nothing all day but gather faggots her face was long and lean her hair thin and black and her nose so large that it made you think of a cauliflower oh groaned prince pompadour falling back on kabumpo for support well she's a princess and a fairy the only one in any kingdom I don't see why you want to be so fussy, said the king fretfully. Shall I tell her royal highness of the great and good fortune that has befallen her? asked the prime pumper, starting for the door. Do so at once, snapped Pompous. Just then he gave a scream of fright and pain, for a round shiny object had flown through the air and struck him in the head. What was that? The prime pumper looked suspiciously at the elegant elephant. Kabumpo glared back. A uh, a warning, stuttered the prime pumper, afraid to say that Kabumpo had flung the offended missile. A warning, your majesty. It's nothing of the kind, said the king angrily. You're getting old, pumper, and stupid. Why? It's, why, it's a doorknob. Who dares to hit me with a doorknob? It hit me once, mumbled Kabumpo, shifting uneasily from one foot to the other three. How does it strike you? As an outrageous piece of impertinence, spluttered Pompous, turning red as a turkey cock. Perhaps it has something to do with the scroll, suggested Queen Posy, taking it from the king. See, it is gold, and all the doorknobs in the palace are ivory. And look, here are some initials. Sure enough. It was gold, and in the very centre were the initials P.A. Just at this interesting juncture, the page, who had been poking his head in the door every few minutes, gathered his courage together, and rushed up to the king. Pardon, most high highness, but General Quakes bade me say that his mirror was found under the window, stuttered the page, and before Pompous had an opportunity to cry, Be gone, or dip him, the little fellow made a dash for the door and disappeared. It grows more puzzling every minute, wailed the king, looking from the doorknob to the mirror, from the mirror to the scroll. If you take my advice, you'll have this marriage performed at once, said the prime pumper in a trembling voice. I believe I will, sighed Pompous, rubbing the bump on his head. Go and fetch the princess Falero, and you, Pompa, prepare for your wedding. But, father, began the prince, not another word or you'll be dipped, rumbled the king of Pumperdink. I'm not going to have my kingdom disappearing if I can help it. You mean if I can help it, muttered Pompadour gloomily. This is ridiculous, stormed the elegant elephant as the prime minister rushed importantly out of the room. Don't you know that this country of ours is only a small part of the kingdom of Oz? There must be hundreds of princesses for Pompadour to choose from. Why should he not wed Ozma, the princess of us all? Haven't you read any Oz history? Have you never heard of the wonderful Emerald City? 
Let Pompadour start out at once. I myself will accompany him, and if Ozma refuses to marry him, well. The elegant elephant drew himself up. I will carry her off, that's all. It's a long way to the Emerald City, mused Queen Posy, but still... Yes, and what is to become of us in the meantime, pray? While you are wandering all over Oz, we can disappear, I suppose. No, sir. Not one step do you go out of Pompadink. Falero is the proper princess, and Pompadour shall marry her, said Pompous. You're talking through your crown, wheezed Kabumpo. How about the doorknob and mirror? They came out of the cake as well as the scroll. What are you going to do about them? Let's have a look at that mirror. Just a common gold mirror, fumed Pompous, holding it up for the elegant elephant to see. What's the matter? As Kabumpo gave a snort. On the face of the mirror, as Kabumpo looked in, two words appeared. Elegant elephant. And when Pompous snatched the mirror, above his reflection stood the words, Fat old king. Then Queen Posy peeped into the mirror, which promptly flashed, Lovely queen. Why, it's telling the truth, screamed Pompa, looking over his mother's shoulder. At this, the words Charming Prince formed quickly in the glass. The prince grinned at his father, who was now quite beside himself with rage. You think I'm fat and old, do you? snorted the king, flinging the gold mirror face down on the table. This is a nice day, I must say. Scrolls, doorknobs, mirrors, and insults. But what can P.A. stand for? mused Queen Posy thoughtfully. Plain enough, chuckled Kabumpo maliciously. It stands for perfectly awful. Who's perfectly awful? asked Pompous suspiciously. Why, for Lero, sniffed the elegant elephant. That's plain enough to everybody. Dip him, shrieked Pompous. I've had enough of this. Dip him, do you hear? That, yawned Kabumpo, straightening his silk robe is impossible and considering his size it was but just that minute the prime pumper returned and in his interest to hear what the princess Falero had said the king forgot about dipping kabumpo the courier from the princess stepped forward her highness puffed the prime pumper who had run all the way her highness accepts prince pompadour with pleasure and will marry him to-morrow morning Prince Pompadour gave a dismal groan. Fine, cried the king, rubbing his hands together. Let everything be made ready for the ceremony. And in the meantime, Pompous glared about fiercely. I forbid anyone's disappearing. I am still the king. Set a guard around the castle, Pumper, to watch for any signs of disappearance. And if so much as a fence paling disappears, he drew himself up. Notify me at once. Then, turning to the throne, Pompous gave his arm to Queen Posy, and together they started for the garden. "'Do you mean to say you are going to pay no attention to the mirror or doorknob?' cried Kabumpo, planting himself in the king's path. "'Go away,' said Pompous crossly. "'Oh, yes, oh, yes, way for their majesties,' cried the prime Pumper, running ahead with his silver staff and the royal couple swept out of the banquet hall. "'Never mind, Kabumpo,' said the prince, flinging his arm affectionately around the elegant elephant's trunk. "'I dare say Falero has her good points, and we cannot let the old kingdom disappear, you know.' "'Fiddlesticks!' choked Kabumpo. "'She'll make a doormat of you, Pompa. "'Prince Pompa doormat, that's what you'll be. "'Let's run away.' he proposed, his little eyes twinkling anxiously. I couldn't do that and let the kingdom disappear. It wouldn't be right, sighed the prince, and sadly he followed his parents into the royal gardens. The king's a gooch, gulped the elegant elephant unhappily. Then, all at once, he flung up his trunk. Somebody's going to disappear around here, he wheezed darkly. That's certain. With a mighty rustling of his silk robe, Kabumpo hurried off to his own royal quarters in the palace. Left alone, Prince Pompa threw himself down at the foot of the throne and gazed sadly into space. End 
of chapter two